Ah, Shalom and Rastafari. And, you know, still we in, still in the Torah portion, Shalak Laka, um, Talak, Talak, ke, Talak Lakalachihu. Talak Lakalachihu. We're going to go see that, man, because we're not going to be fumbling in our own um, wordplay. But we give thanks to the Almighty Jah Rastafari. Talak Kalak. Talak Kalak. Talak Lekalachihu. Talak Lekalachihu. Give thanks and praises to the Almighty. And what if, you know, the scenario we were looking at with the time period that we are in is that we're basically looking into the midst of these three types of spirits within Israel, within black people, you know, within uh, black and brown peoples who are the Israelite, all the Jews. Um, whether they know they are or they don't know, you know, and you're looking in the midst of these three types of the generation. So I'm looking at Numbers chapter 13, that type that was sent, you know, and even those beautiful names that are given there to the glory of the Almighty. So when his children decide to return back to him in faith and they do that, they understand what their new name is. Their new name is really was always their old name because um, the first shall be last and the last shall be first or as it was in the beginning so shall it be in the end you know and these were all testimonies that we grew up our grandparents were telling us our mothers our fathers and even though they may not have known the full spectrum of the word they still were able to give us a template that would enable us to walk forward in the pattern of the almighty Ja Rastafari and to return these beautiful black and brown children back to the land of Jerusalem where they would have security and a true life, a real life and the substance that was old or the repairing of Jerusalem through the children of God should begin in all the places that they were scattered out. So when somebody says that asking for reparation, Yahweh was not asking them for anything in that sense. Yahweh did not ask them for that. But then at the same time, you remember that, see, in Numbers 14, at the end of the chapter in Numbers 14, what happened was um, once they had their determination because they had went against the covenants, they went against, you know, Josh said, hey, y'all go scout, go check out the land, go tour Mama Africa, Mama Ethiopia, check it out. You know, and then when they came back and said, yes, we can we can take the land. So you're looking at this in the English template. Basically, the, the, the instruction that's been given to humanity is to replenish the earth. This is all of the process of replenishing the earth. This is basically um, the fact that people think that somebody is going to take something from somebody else's because you're not studied up or learned in the almighty. Jah does not send. See, let, let, let's repeat this again. Jah does not send his people to take nothing from no one else because the Almighty instituted land to each peoples, each seed, or if you would like to get into race, you know, on that issue, in that place. That can that is an issue sometimes, too, because when you go in the earlier times, some of these races were not. Um, they had not evolved into the, the red race or the white race or, you know, the so-called yellow race and th these other terminologies that are used to describe, you know, people's racial uh, ethnicities and uh, skin pigmentations and different things like that, that these terminologies were not used, but their, their seed lines were used. Like they came from this line, they were Hittites or you know, they were parasites, they were Gergeshites, you know what I'm saying? They were Amorites, you know what I mean? Uh, in this together, uh, these seven Canaanite nations, they were like alliances of evil in a certain sense. So then they were like seven Canaanite nations. So they became these nations that were evolved together against the children of Israel, against the children of the righteous, against the children who are of good, who are about replenishing the earth. You know, seeing the beautiful, the fair weather um, come back. You know what I'm saying? The fair weather come back. Now, this whole thing about um, uh, the climate change, and we put made this advice to you. Uh, climate change. The thing is about climate change. That is it true or is it real? Um, we can look at it like this. The point is that as long as the people of Yahweh are entreated evil, then there will be a fight of the Almighty to defend His people. 
just like he defended Moses in Numbers 12, like it says in the details of the um, in the details of the Kumash. If you look in the Humash, in the Humash, in the details of Numbers 12, it said that Moses was a meek man and that his um, his troubles, his mind, the things that were on his mind were far worse and more so than any man on the earth. So Yahweh said, Jah Rastafari said, oh, you know, Moses is, is a man, he's a meek man and he's defenseless. Let me defend him. And this is what Yahweh said. So and there's also that psalm that says that the, the Lord of Jacob will not see what we do to his people. He will not understand. So even in the lost state, even though that the black and brown people are figuring out who they are or they're starting to understand, still you politicians over here in Babylon and USA and these other places around the world, you're still responsible for the treatment of these lost minded people. Just because they don't proclaim or they don't know who they are, you're still responsible for the treatment of them. Now, in this chapter, in Numbers chapter 13 here, you know, as we take, a, um, give thanks and praise to Almighty. Mm -hmm. Give thanks and praises to Job because we were thankful because there was three forms of, um, you know, three forms that were basically explained to us. In, in this revelation of, of this chapter. Now in chapter, let's see, are we in chapter 13 or was this chapter 14? Let the eye do a brief, you know, check. Okay, so we were in chapter 13 where it says, And the Yahweh spake to Musa, saying, Send thou men that they may search. And the word was tour to mender about, especially for trade or um, re reconnoitering. Reconnoitering. Yeah, we, we have to go and, um, you know, I think I thought it was saying reconnoitering, but it's, that's not what it says. Reconnoitering. Reconnoitering. You know, so especially about sent to describe the excellent merchant, search out to seek to spy out. So this is not in the sense of um, a false discovery. It's not saying that when the devil sent you. You know what I mean? Because people have gone off of their own um, witchcraft decisions that were made. So they went off of off of uh, instructions maybe given from the devil. And this is why they went and taken other people's land or stole other people's land. Though now in this portion in number 13 where Moses sent the scouts out. Moses sends the scouts out in the verse that we were speaking about. Where um, where it speaks about now it gives a name for each one of the the heads of each tribe that went to scout the land of you know Mama Africa, Mama Ethiopia, all of Saudi Arabia, the Tigris, the Euphrates, basically the promised land that was given to Abraham and his seed. Because remember, Abraham's seed were the children of the faith as well. Because remember how many of the you know only the remnant of Israel of the black and brown people surviving. And, you know, the other peoples that basically the Gentiles that had to replace the other black and brown people who didn't believe or didn't want to be part of it. You know, they didn't believe in the land. They didn't believe that uh, Yahweh had, you know, blessed them to have a land flowing with milk and honey and all of these problems and these bells and this, these evil, um, <laughs> you know what I mean? These evil situations that would be over here. These, you know, um, the Shemitah year, you know. There was no release year of debts. You know, they never released the year of debts and they wonder why these things are happening with the climate. It's, it's not all this, you know, what you talk about just with the cars and all this other stuff. It's more to it. What if it's what you're doing to human beings? What if it's your harming of human beings? What if it's the stress that people stress and go through overworked? You know what I mean? Um, making low, low wages. The poor, the poverty in such a, a rich country. You know what I mean? And all you rich people all over the world who join Satan or join the devil, you know, whether you know it or not, you know that if what you're doing is evil or if you have tried to help people or not. You know, you see these people struggling in these situations. All these people marching from places where they ran out of resources and they come to places where, um, you know, these big 
groups and organizations and companies have the weight and the monies to help these people. And they turn their back and they tell them this and that. So imagine if you ever fall out of power into these people's hands. Imagine how they're probably going to treat you. And this is just... This is just this is just reality. This is just reality. Think about it. Why would you treat people a certain type of way? Then when you fall out of power, what you think they're going to do to you? You know what I mean? So this is just, um, you know, you know, do what they say. Uh, they like to use the word karma, which, you know, really in that sense, they only use it in the sense it's another word for Christ, whether they know so to admit it or they even understand to, to admit it. You know, as it says in Psalm 82, they know not, neither do they understand because if they're not in Torah or, or f following the guidelines and principles of Torah, they don't understand. And this is what those of us that understand must understand. You know, going through these heavy pressure, this weight, um, dealing with these, you know, death to black and white down presses. You know, and that's a Rasta Fetty and give thanks to the elders and um, the Rebbe, the Raboni, you know what I mean, of the line of Judah society. And the Rastafari sabbatical page on the YouTube. And I'm um, pleased, brothers and sisters, you know, tune in with the eyes on the air and in the iris so that we can come out of Babylon. You know, because as we aliyah, as we begin to go up, as we begin to aliyah, and, and it's kind of beautiful, you know, that that name there, aliyah, aliyah, aliyah. You know, it's 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 special to me for certain type certain type reasons, and I'm not gonna go into the details of that. But there's a it's very special. But all the Hebrew names are special, you know, and those connections that Jah gave us, those building blocks. Now, being that it's seemingly we in the midst of these three types of these generations, these three type of spirits in these generations. This is very interesting, and I believe the one next. Let, let me see because I need to go and check the the chapter before, um, or the chapter. I think it's the chapter after this, and I think it was chapter fourteen. And we'll go there in in a moment, um, because we remember that I believe it was. If it was it in the last tour portion, or was it in this tour portion? It was given like the template for the fire. You know what I mean? Um, we were looking at where Israel was given that template for how the, the fire offering on all the quality. Basically, it was all of the orders and instructions and the qualities that come with the miraculous, you know, the tokens of events and the specified going up the steps or the ladders, the invisible, miraculous, spiritual um, situations that were going on. You know, behind the scenes that the eye cannot see that's concerning the Korban or the offering of the Aishans to the Almighty and these many blessings that are within it. And so it breaks down the animal types and how they were broken down. And maybe some of the ancient Egyptians understood this if they were not aside worshiping themselves because if it's obviously that's what happened to men. They begin to worship themselves. And people also begin to put more um they were more they put more they put more and there's a word and i'm looking for you know excuse the eye but they put more emphasis in their faith or belief in the men the 10 scouts that came back with the false report look at what's going on in babylon you got a lot of ones over here they over here calling david and jonathan homosexuals they're not afraid of the lord they're not afraid of what the Lord going to do to them for <clears throat> calling his children homosexuals. You know, so that's that's a very interesting subject matter right there. You know what I mean? You're not afraid to call. Um, knowing that he had a commandment that says that if a man lay with another man, he be put to death. Or if a woman lay with another woman, you know, it's, it's you know they would be put to death. Basically, sodomy was to put ones to death. It's, it's like a death sentence. And then to believe in it. And to say, oh, I believe in it. After you gotten away with something, then you didn't repent for it. So not only do you not repent, but you seek to also to furthermore injure. You know, it kind of reminds me of that verse um, where Israel went to Edom. You know what I mean? To help them. And Josh says, you rend their whole arm. Like you broke their, you know, like their they hand was hurt. They was running from the enemy. 
and they went to their brothers for help and, and their brother was like, yeah, and they, and they broke their arm and basically gave them back to the enemy. And that's what we get from these, you know, these, um, the, like, the, like the, the, the whole thing with, uh, it, it's very interesting with these, with these, some of these, um, brothers that believe in this whole ancient Egypt thing and all that, you know, and, um, not to mention names right now, but you wrong, you wrong, you know, and again, you know, again, Jah will bring his sword against you lightning fire and brimstone and you can't don't try to go back and forth you know if you're gonna call out and call your people um you know evil stuff like homosexuals and stuff you and call jonathan and david homosexual then you have to be ready for that repercussion that's coming from the lord you know what i mean you have to be ready for that repercussion because that's the energy that you put out to the people this is the discouragement this was part of the the um the 10 scouts discouragement if you will, this is how they discourage the people. They manage to be able to discourage the people that way, you know. So, and this was the area we was talking about when you get to um, Numbers chapter thirteen, verse twenty-three and twenty-four, and it says, "And they came to the brook, the brook, the Nakal." So it wasn't the valley like I had spoken in the last, um, you know, and uh, it, it it wasn't a valley, but it was a a Nakal, a stream, a brook. You know what I mean? So they came to a stream, a, a very well water stream, a brook, a beautiful stream, a beautiful brook. And it says Nakala, Nakal, the noun is a feminine noun. And Nakala, Nakala, Nakala is a, well, Nakal is, is a masculine noun, excuse me, Nakal. But Nakala is a feminine noun. And there goes its relationship with Psalm 12, 124 and 4. The water, the Mayim, would have overpowered us. Check this out. The current would have overwhelmed us. So, without Jah and that spirit without Yahweh, that you didn't believe because it was, it was the